So when we're in this position, our starting action is going to be Gumakasana. So the Gumakasana action, you've got to see that you open the armpit and then take the back of the palm in between the shoulder blades and wait there. Wait. Okay, so the arm's going to go out to the side for the other side. You know, rotate the arm and reach up. Now, those of you who can, just move the arm back slightly so that you are engaging and isolating the movement around the shoulder blade itself. See that you get some motion in this action, motion. Keep the motion going and then reach up and then see, are you able to catch? Okay, so we come for Parvatasana. So interlock the fingers, extend the arms, reach up. Now reach up with those arms so much, reach up with the arms so much, extend, 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 reach up. Now, as you reach up, you've got to see, can you lengthen through the center of the body? Can you get that length through the center of the body? And then releasing the arms down, placing the palms, looking forward. Okay, interlock the fingers the other way, extending the palms, reaching up, extending up, pushing up, lifting up, even more. Push up. Yes, get that action. And then releasing the arms down and to the feet, lifting the sternum chest. And then releasing completely. Okay, so if you're on the chair, come onto your mat now for Adha Mukha Svanasana. But if you're in Virasana, you just take the foam pads away and you take your hands forward like this. You may need to move your feet back and then come into Adha Mukha Svanasana. Be there. Extend back with the buttocks strongly. Working those arms nicely, pull up the front thighs, knees, legs straight and strong. So be in your Adha Mukha Shwanasana. Okay, well done. Now walk those feet to your hands and be there. So be in Uttanasana. Be in Uttanasana. Have a wide legged action. See that the foot bones are pushing down very strongly. You're lifting up through the legs, through the inner knees, and then folding the arms, keeping this action. So lift up with your buttocks. Now see that you extend all the way through the legs to the buttocks and let the arms release down, be there. So keep lifting those legs, be strong in the front thigh, the back thigh, the side thigh, the inner thigh. All of this is really important. Okay, and now coming up. Come up slowly. All right, so stand in Tadasana, feet together. Take the weight right back into the heel strongly. Pull up the kneecaps and thighs. See that you pin your shoulders back and down. And lift the sternum chest up. Soft inhalation and exhalation. Okay, so we're gonna go quite quickly now with the arms, just watch. Now, if you need for Gumakasana, I'm gonna repeat the actions. If you need for Gumakasana about, then grab yourself about. But just watch the screen. Breath in, extend and reach, and then come up, reach up. Get the arm work going, extend up, reach, extend and release. Arms up, add in Garudasana now, with me, Garudasana, this action. 
action. Okay, let's see if we can do the other side. Garudasana with the arms and release. Arms up, arms behind the back, extend in and then arms up, breathe. And now see Parvatasana reaching up, extend up, push up and Uddhvahastasana and releasing down. Okay, so if you were watching the screen during that, that arm action, then just rewind it, rewind it. Okay, so you come into Tadasana and breathe. Okay, so we're gonna come for Shishasana now. Okay, so coming into your Shishasana, if you're going to the wall, then that's fine. You can go on to the wall or you can come into the center of the room. If you're not coming for Shishasana, then have a look at what you need to be doing on the screen. Okay, so we're coming into a variation now of Shishasana, so just have a look. Look. So you're going to lift the back of the pelvis, extend up. You know, you need to look at the video so that you can see what you're doing and then you can pause it. So the variation today is going to be Pavrita Ekapada Shishasana. So when you come for this, it's quite a challenge because you've got to reach those legs up. They've got to be absolutely strong and straight. And then you take the right leg forward, the left leg back. And what we tend to do is just rock on with this leg. You've got to see that the back leg reaches back more. So you've got to see that you reach that back leg really strongly back. Okay, so I'm going to do the other side because I want to show turning towards you. So you want to see that those legs are really straight and strong. That back leg working very strongly. And then start the Pavarita action, rotating. See if you can rotate with those legs really strong, extending back leg, front leg, and getting that turn. And then bringing the legs back together. So both sides need to be practiced. Okay, so that's the variation today. If you're coming into Shishasana and the variations in Shishasana, then you have to see that you are in a good Shishasana between two and five minutes before the variations. Okay, so I'll see you in a moment. Okay, well done. So now that you're back from your Shishasana, then we're going to come into some seated positions. So I've got a blanket here. I want you to fold your blanket and just have a look at this practice. Now, what I want you to do is to get yourself a couple of bricks as well. And then come on to your support. So you can see here that I have this edge going into the tailbone and this is really what I want to achieve here. And then placing my hands onto the bricks in this way and lifting up, pulling up the kneecaps and thighs, reaching up. So you want to move the dorsal spine in quite strongly and be here. Now you can turn the bricks, but the bricks really do help us to 
understand this concave action. This is where all the arm work comes in. You want to see that you can sit in this position for about five minutes, pinning the shoulders back, being there, being present in the action. Okay, so once you establish that, the extension of the legs so strongly, then we're going to move on with the pose. So the first action is to come forward. Now, when you come forward in this action, you want to see that your hinge and you get in the length through the center of the body, and then you reach for the big toe. So a light padangustasana, we're seeing that we're holding on to the toes. Now, don't let that stop you from working the legs very strongly and getting this concave action in the dorsal spine. You want to see that you ground those legs down really firmly. Now to come forward, it may be that you need to have some support underneath your head to come forward, grounding down with the legs and just take your time with this because actually it takes time to unfold the pelvis the outer thighs, the inner groins, the lower back, so much is involved in this action. So have a go. If you can go a little bit further forward, you can always rest your head onto some support. Okay, so just pause there, just hold for a moment and then come up. We're not staying in that pose for very, very long. Then you're going to come for Savangasana. If you're not practicing Savangasana today, then a soft Setu Banda action. So get your supports ready for Savangasana. And again, just have a look at the demonstration. You might want to stay in your Savangasana for 10 minutes, and that's fine. But you need to see where we're going with this. So here we are. This is the action. Before we go for our Savangasana today, we're going to come into Suptakanasana in this way, lifting the pelvis, being onto the top of the shoulders, holding onto the back spine. Then we're going to bring the leg around one side. Now you want to see, can you walk around? Can you walk around? But still keep the lift, keep the lift in the pelvis. So quite, quite a job to get that lift, but see that you lift with the buttocks. And then we're going to release and come to the other side. And then we take the legs together. And then you see either one or both legs, you come for your Savagasta. So today, if you can, put your timer on for five minutes, if you can, in your Savagasta. So, I will start you off in this practice, but you have to see that your timing is really personal. So it's down to you, whatever you feel is appropriate for your timing. Okay, good, well done. All right, so come into your Savangasana, go into Halasana first and then take those legs really wide. So see that your legs are in Supta Kanasana. Now once you've got that Supta Kanasana action, you're going to walk the left leg to your right leg. Walk round, walk round, walk round, walk round. Left leg to your right leg. Yeah, walk round, walk round. Well done. Hold it there and lift both hips up. Don't let one leg drag. Okay, and then come into Supta Kanasana again. See that you lift the back of the pelvis. 
Okay, and now we walk the leg back round to the right leg. See that you're walking the leg round to the right leg as much as possible, as much as you can. Okay, and again, don't drop the hips. See that the hips are lifting. You're lifting the sideways, lifting up, buttocks up really nicely. Working well. Okay, and now slowly coming back into Supta Konasana, bring the legs for Halasana. Okay, and now go up into your Savangasana. Now reach up into Savangasana, adjust your arms, take your arms in and just settle for a moment or two. So you want to ground down with your arms and see that you're lifting up through the side waist. Now, if this pose gets heavy for you, then reach those legs up even more, as much as you can. Reach those legs, reach the legs up as much as you can. See that you're getting all of that action. Extending up into the heels, up into the legs, so much. Soft inhalation, soft exhalation. So see that you're feeling that whole extension from the base of the shoulders all the way up to the heels. Extend, broaden the sole of the foot and stay. So again, you want to see that you can stay in this pose for about five minutes if possible. Okay, so I'm going to leave you to your own timings and when you have done, once you're at, you can't ready to come down, come down with a support. So you've got to see that you get that elevation to bring the legs down and land fairly lightly. Okay. So if you're staying there, that's absolutely fine. But we're continuing with the sequence now in Halasana. So come into Halasana and then slowly roll down and just be there for a moment or two. Rest the lower back. So just be there for a moment or two. You don't want to get up too quickly after this pose. So we're going to prepare for Shavasana now. You can have something for your head. So if you do feel that you prefer some support underneath the back of the head, then that's absolutely fine. You can just take the back of the head onto the support and just rest in in your shavasana. So just take time with this, just take time for the body to settle. There's been some really uh, quite strong pose work in the sequence today. So when you're in your shavasana, just let the whole facial features completely release. Release the throat, release the shoulders, release the abdomen and let the legs just fall from the inner thigh to the outer thigh. Now take your attention to your breath, a soft inhalation, soft exhalation. Let the breath touch the sides of the body. And let the abdomen become soft.
So just let your Shavasana take over. So there's no thought process of what needs to be done or what has been going on in your mind. You are just here to relax. Let the body become weighted. And let Shavasana be your body. Those of you who are finishing your practice now, roll to your right side and come into a seated position. Lifting up through the center of the body, softening the belly, softening the abdomen. Look forward to seeing you again next time. Namaste.